Even granting that they ban books from libraries, label teachers as groomers for acknowledging LGBTQ people, and say that arming teachers is better than passing common sense gun laws, you could argue that the most disrespectful thing that conservatives ever did to schools was adding the U to Prager U. So we're diving back into the cesspool of conservative YouTube once again in this week's God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Don't Trust Your Conscience, which sounded honestly like good advice for the audience at PragerU, but it's not. <laughs> they, they did it wrong. They did the wrong angle. Yep. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you love the bizarre worldview of Prager University, but you're mad they haven't taken on thoughts yet, you <laughs> will love this YouTube video. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst adding text to your video. <laughs> Dennis Prager kept forgetting to leave space for the words he wanted to put up on the screen. So they had to violently change the camera angle each time to move his entire body to the side of the frame yep. to then have text next to him. Mm -hmm. It was like he was getting muscled out constantly by the text. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like... Whoo. All right, so I'm going to, obviously we'll save this for the end, but I'm going to go with best worst solution. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right, when it comes time to the like, well, you know, what should I do about this? It falls flatter than anything has ever fallen before. Oh, I thought you were talking, because he talks about the Holocaust in there, and I was like, all right, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> final <laughs> solution. Cool. And I'm going to go with best worst example We'll talk, it's like a one-off sentence in one of his many examples of why conscience is a bad idea, but it's truly a nonsense statement, right? He might as well say, well, then why is there air? Right on. I I, I don't know which one you mean. I know, it's so a tricky, I'll point it out when yeah. it comes. I'll get there. It's a teaser. Yeah, there's, there's, there are definitely multiple contenders for that. All right, so so yeah, so the, the opening bit, the opening premise of this video is I'm going to debunk the very concept that you should let your conscience be your guide. Yeah, lots of people say you should be ethical. However, that's how <laughs> <Right>. it starts. <laughs> that's not great. Yeah. Well, that is a prerequisite to doing Prager U, I'm sure. Yeah, finally, Dennis Prager is coming out against that liberal cuck, Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> right. <laughs> He goes, you know, through most of human history, we accepted that conscience wasn't enough and we needed God and God-based moral instruction to get us through. And I'm like, yeah, how were our morals back then, man? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's talking about Western history. He specifically says that. He's yes, like, Western right. history says you need a God to be moral. I was like, okay, what else does Western history say, Dennis? Did you want to mention <laughs> any other stuff from that? Yeah. yeah. On that point that your conscience isn't a good moral guide for your whole life, it's like, yeah, that's... That's super obvious to most people, Dennis. That's like saying how hungry you are isn't the best way to diagnose medical conditions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but the point is, what he misses the whole time is that what you need to be a good person is a good conscience. What you need to be a good person and yet get behind the idea of burning heretics is a conscience and then another thing, which is, of course, God-based rules. Yeah, Judeo-Christian God-based rules. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, very, very much so, yeah. So he's like, you know, the, the idea that conscience is all you need is a byproduct of modern secular society, and they're pretty irrational. <laughs> Here's a list of other irrational things that secular people would have you believe. What a weird start to this point. The whole, right. like, having a conscience problem was caused by modern secular society, and he's trying to fight against that. And now he has examples. Yeah. Right. Just out of the fucking blue. He's like, so if you think that secular people are are smart, well, why do they think dot, dot, dot? And his first one is it, it, there is no discussion. He's not going to sneak some transphobia into. He's like, the first one is that men give birth. They do. Dumb example. Yep. Just like a thing that happens, man. Yep. So that we can watch happen. His second example is the idea that Western civilization, these are his words, Western civilization is no better than any other. <laughs> Ooh. White people aren't the best at everything. Yeah, correct. That's correct. Well, but but any other? Like, the, like there, there's literally no civilization that anyone thinks is worse. Okay. All right. Yeah. In the words of former President Barack Obama, go on. Yeah, right. So, and then he adds, 
if you're colorblind, you're racist. That's his final example of irrational things that secular people believe. No fucking, I, I have to assume that this is from his I don't see color spiel that he gives when people ask why he doesn't work with black people, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, like the whole like, oh, well, I'm colorblind is fucking insane. No one's colorblind. And even if even if you mean it in the folksy, like I treat folks like folks things, that would be like, I don't need no wheelchair ramp. I don't see wheelchairs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, exactly. But yeah, but then he explains to us that the problem is, is that the conscience is easy to manipulate, unlike biblical rules, right? Obviously, like you yeah, can't no imagine good. someone Hard manipulating fast. that stuff. <laughs> yeah, he goes, it's as malleable as putty. And I wrote in my notes, oh my God, he had to include that because his dumbass audience doesn't know what malleable means. And it makes me <laughs> totally so happy. Did. You know, putty like squishy squish, and we actually hear some squishy squish noises yes. here, too. And we yeah. see a visual of putty. We also see this, I, I I think it's supposed to be puppets caught in strings visual, but it looks like people like assaulted by a spaghetti wielding yeah. giant. No, mm. he's like, yeah, the reality is a puppeteer manipulates your conscience with strings that in my graphic, he apparently forgot to untangle, and he's having a lot of trouble pushing the knot down like, Four Nintendo 64 controllers <laughs> so, have been there for a long time. Right, right, yeah, exactly. And he's like, but think about all of the people, the evil people throughout history that did things that they thought, like, that they resolved with their conscience. And he gives, again, he gives a list of examples. He goes, like, Nazis, communists, and Islamic terrorists. Why would you mention <laughs> the Nazis and the Islamic terrorists there? You had other ones without you know, the religion directly built into how horrible it was, just use those. Yeah. Really? Right. No, I, I love, though, that he, he specifically excluded Christian and Jewish terrorists because he knows his audience. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> I also just, I have to love that he goes, and that this was my best worst, he goes, why doesn't conscience stop people from doing evil things? And I was like, I mean, it it does, Dennis. Some That's what the sometimes. word means, right. It's not, not, all the time. Okay, but the point is he's saying there's the problem of evil, therefore the omnipotent creator of the universe who made evil is what you should believe in. That's that's where he's going with this. Well, that really is. Like, there are a lot of parts of this where my, my notes are just, do you guys think maybe he legit doesn't know what the word conscience means? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's claiming secular morality is prone to manipulating people, and then he makes that point about the problem of evil. He's very, very confused for a university professor, I would say. Yeah, I, I wrote in my notes when he said that. To be clear, that sentence is so stupid, I don't know what it could mean. <laughs> right. Right, well, yeah, they, and then he follows that dumb shit up with the thing where he says, like, you know, your conscience doesn't produce your feelings and behaviors. Your feelings and behaviors produce your conscience. What the fuck are you even talking about? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? He's like a shitty robot trying to make it through a traffic stop. How do I emotions? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> From my brain flesh. Yeah. And he's saying every evil person has a clear conscience. That's kind of the point he's trying to make. But yeah, like, uh -huh. no, that's just you, right. Dennis Prager. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, it, it surprises no one that fucking Dennis Prager doesn't seem to be familiar with what it's like to have a conscience. But yeah, people are bad at math. So we're getting rid of that. We're doing religious class instead for all. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's got this. He's got this amazing moment. There's a little graphic of a guy stealing and there's a little thought bubble that says they have insurance. And I think Dennis's point <laughs> is that people who steal think what they're doing is right as long as the people right. they're stealing from have insurance. I wrote in my notes, tell on yourself less, Dennis. Tell yeah. on yourself <laughs> less. <laughs> Might as well be a cartoon of Dennis being like, I can make bullshit right-wing videos. What does it matter? <laughs> Most of my listeners will be dead in a couple of years. I love to, he starts his next point by saying, and here's another proof as though like some previous proof had been presented no, and we just missed it. Absolutely reject the premise of this, but go ahead. Yeah. Proceed, governor. Yeah. He's like, consider that people on both sides of conflict say that they're following their conscience. And I'm like, well, yeah, but 
one or the other of them has got some fucking religion or political ideology fucking with it, yeah. though, right? Because, like, over and over again, he keeps presenting, like, things that are refuted by just adding, right, right, but your conscience can be short-circuited by religion or political ideology yeah. is what happens. The first example he uses here is the Nazis. And I wrote in my notes, does Dennis Prager think the Nazis were going with a gut feeling? Right. Like Hitler woke up from a long night of weird dreams and was like, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm just like, oh, I'm feeling like we got to gas some Jews. You know what yeah, I'm right. saying? Like we got, it's just my, my heart tells me that. I'm going to call them. No, he's like, yeah, take World War II, for example. I'm like, no, the, the Nazis knew they were baddies. I've seen the sketch, right? They knew. <laughs> Also, he's saying the source of the absolute morality is Judeo-Christian values in the Bible. Like, does he think Muslim people are really just phoning it in with the faith part? And that's how <laughs> you, you just go to people on both sides think they're correct? Oh, no, nah, they're faking it. And then, and then we get, I think, probably the worst animation in the whole thing because he's like even the Japanese soldiers who raped Korean women th had did so with clear conscience. And I'm like, why would you Think that, and also, by the way, like when Americans were in Korea, we also raped Korean women. Our soldiers did too. Like it's weird that he would specify only the Japanese ones there. Also, nobody was like. I actually feel great about this. Just to be clear, I, I think this is <laughs> right. Exactly, guys, guys. This gang rape is ethical, right? Like secular this is ethical, right? This is super High five. Good. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Not have sex while I'm over here? That would be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, and, and by the way, yes, there is a graphic and an accompanying crying Korean woman in the background for this point. Yeah. Right? I like how they were like, Horrible. what's the classy way to show gang rape? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. don't want to scare off our listeners of grandmas and mentally ill grandpas. I, well, I also feel like Dennis Prager was like, you know, I've got all this audio of crying Korean women. I might as well put some. <laughs> I bought it on many it. vids. We must be able to use it in multiple <laughs> ways. <laughs> But he's like, well, and you know what? I don't even need to resort to extreme examples like World War II. And I'm like, well, did you just want to talk about raping Korean women then? I just really needed an animation of a Korean rape. And I can't tell you why, because the doctor <laughs> so, will put me back no. in the hospital. Yeah. I really wanted it to be tax deductible. So. No, but then he's like, let's do a relaxed example, abortion. Right. And we'll talk about that now. Yes, we don't need extreme examples. Let's just take my stance on abortion. And I, I also, I love that like most pro-life people, he can't even state his position without admitting it's bullshit, right? Where he's like, a he, fetus is a human being that does, has a right to live, subject to clauses A, B, and C in paragraphs four and five, which we found didn't <laughs> test well with our voters. Yeah, give me a fucking break. Yeah, honestly, if the Bible had like a random chapter in it that just said 30 weeks, Wink. Trust me, this will make sense in 1973. <laughs> like, I'd be a lot more impressed. Still wrong, yeah. but, you know, way more credible at that point. Yeah, no, exactly. And again, just, just point out, his point is nonsense because pro-choice people aren't following their consciences. Right. They're following larger societal morality, right? Like, everyone has the initial gut reaction that abortion is bad. That's why you hold up signs of gooey hands and not ideas. We as a society go... No, nah, man, it's like a fucking nickel in there. And we're like, oh, I didn't realize it was a nickel because I've never been inside a uterus. Thank you, agreed morality of society for saving me from Dennis Prager. Right, right, exactly. Like, like, keep in mind, we also think that like we instinctively do that with things like autopsies and surgeries, too. Right, right. dentistry. <laughs> Well, and he's like, well, you know, both people on the pro-life and pro-choice side are equally convinced that their conscience dictates their views. I'm like, well, I guess the problem couldn't be conscience then. What is the difference <laughs> then between those two people and how they determine their morality? I think we've isolated a variable, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about it? Also, uh, cut. Dennis, uh, pro-choice people aren't secretly having the same amount of non-abortions <laughs> as pro-life people. So uh, they're not e equally acting on their consciences. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Right. But he doesn't need to ex uh, resort to extreme examples like abortion. Just take his transphobia instead. Right. Because that's his next God. one. He's like, even people who mutilate girls by turning them into boys think that they're following their conscience. I'm like, yeah. Woof. It's like he has a stopwatch going and he's like, oh, one minute left. What else grinds my gears? Trans people. What's Tra the yep. deal with trans? There we go. Check. Moving on. 
All right, it's time to present the two sides of the trans argument. Here you go, Dennis, reasonable. They take a Hatari Hanzo sword and they just find a girl <laughs> and just, just cut off her nips and then they send them to people for sending in stories at scathingnews at gmail.com. <laughs> Also, I don't want them to do that. Those are the two <laughs> sides of this issue. <laughs> right, yes. But yeah, but he ultimately concludes that conscience is just a euphemism for what I feel. And again, I'm like, then you fundamentally misunderstand what that word means because you have no conscience. You're like a scientist trying to imagine what it's like to see through the eyes of a mantis shrimp. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> also, that's not a euphemism. That's literally the definition in the dictionary. Conscience is yep. yes. what you feel morally about something. <laughs> right. The whole thing. So he's like, yeah, so so now that we've got rid of that pesky conscience, what should we replace it with? I'm like, oh, I bet it's your religion, isn't I it? I wrote that too. I was like, oh, oh, I bet it's what Dennis thinks. <laughs> well, but it's even dumber than that because his answer is a conscience. <laughs> right? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't he goes like, well, now you can't trust your conscience. So what do you use? A better conscience. Exactly. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button and replace <laughs> that with your conscience. There you go. Yeah. Prager you. But your conscience has to be built a certain way, right? He gives you the four things that you have to base it on. The first is truth, because lies are the mother of evil. I feel like the dad's somebody who's trying to convince you that they 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 have lies that live in Canada. You you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he also says courage, because good is impossible without it. No. Hey Dennis, <laughs> have you have you never just done a nice thing for right? Free? <laughs> That didn't require chivalry. At yeah, the exact there were right, no yeah. zombies to fight my way through on the way to the soup kitchen. So I was like, well, this is ah, bullshit, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, of course, you need God, but not some fucking bullshit hippie God or Muslim one, right? The God of the goddamn fucking Judeo-Christian Bible. He yeah. specifies that. Oh, man, there goes the truth. Right. And the big question is, why that God, Dennis, and scene cut? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Get out of the sketch. Well, but then he adds a fourth fucking thing, and I could you I could give you a thousand chances to write down what you think it was. I bet you wouldn't get it because the thing that comes after God is reason. Huh. You also need reason. He says, because God without reason leads to fanaticism. Well, yeah, no, it gets to the where your kids won't even invite you to Thanksgiving anymore. But reason without God leads to moral chaos. <laughs> like Insufficient transphobia, for example. Yes. <laughs> right. I want so badly for him to explain that more. No, here's what happens, right? You're sitting there, you're thinking of logical, reasonable things, and then you're like, it's probably okay for me to fuck the bread at Sainsbury's. And that's, you know, that's what... <laughs> okay, but if you buy it and go home, it is okay to do that. Yes. No, it is. Well, it is. Now, <laughs> now you've proved Dennis Prager correct. I hope you're happy, <laughs> Uh, no, it's so funny because he's like, you know, it would lead to chaos. And I, I was like, like insufficient bigotry. And then he uses his example and it actually is insufficient. But like accepting trans people. Yeah, he's his literal like smug reposes. Unless, of course, you think that men give birth. And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> Ugh, woof. <laughs> And then he he sums up everything. He's like, so so you can let your conscience be your guide as long as you agree with me, right? That's the that's the resolution. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are doing conscience, but not like the fucking thinky one from the dictionary. My one, <laughs> my my one, <laughs> old ghost. It's like when it, when you someone has a family card game and they're like, here's the rules, and you're like, oh fuck, here we go. Okay, yeah, right. Well, the good news and. The bad news, I guess, is that Dennis Prager has something like 1,700 more videos. So I'm sure we'll be seeing him again on a future installment of God Awful Minis. <laughs> <laughs>